Hello, welcome back to the Ken Survival Channel. Today I'm going to be making a Swedish torch, or rocket torch, as this is a, a slight varied design based on one that uh, Des Catty's used. You've seen me uh, camp with him in the past, and I'll link him below in his version of this. I'm going to be using some birch for this, and uh, well, got some uh, fire starter here with it. So I'm going to cut this down and get on with it, and then we're going to do some cooking. Cut a couple of sections out of this piece of birch just to uh, make my life easy if one of them splits funny. And uh, you can pretty tell from this one I've harvested it before for birch bark. <laughs> I think this is just a little too wide for me to batten with my knife, plus it's pretty knotty. So I think I'm going to have to use my axe here and see how that goes. Yes, there's a bit of rust on my axe. I didn't clean it properly after the last camp. Not too bad. Maybe not as dry in the middle as I would have hoped. I'm just going to use that mark to roughly mark the next piece. And if I turn around, we're just going to batten that down to that mark. And that's not going to cooperate either. Some of the pieces may not just split down to the point the way you want, so you're just going to have to work on it a little bit. Until you get that middle section out. And like that. So again, this one we're going to have to work with the axe a bit. Can now put all the segments back together, as you can see there. As you can see there, you've got the, the chimney, the hole, the air hole, going all the way through the middle. I lost one of the shelves off of one of my pieces when I was trimming it with the axe, but it's not going to matter too much. Now, this is going to make it easier, the fact that it's split, to make our hole to fuel the fire and for the air to come in. I'm going to use these two pieces as there's no knot where I want to do the hole, which is going to be above this line here. I'm just going to mark that in some way on each piece. It's going to be there to about there. And on this one, it doesn't matter if it doesn't line up perfect. Then I just need to saw in until I reach that shoulder mark so I know the hole's going to go through to the chimney area. Just going to put in a couple more cuts here just so it's easier to remove the waste. Waste just just come out like that. We have our first cup. Then 
There we go, when you replace the two pieces back together you can see you've got a, a nice rocket stove style hole for the air to go in and to fuel it if you need to. Right, now's the time just to tie them up. I'm just going to use some jute twine here. The outside of this stove shouldn't get too hot until much later in the burning. There we go, you can of course use wire for this if you uh, have it. But as you can see that's pretty secure as it is. You can take off some of this bark if you want to. Help get it going. But there is our Swedish rocket stove. Now I'm just digging this in a little bit, just to help it keep sturdy, nice and flat. And I'm doing this in the fireplace, but generally these don't get too hot, and you can even pick them up once they're lit. There we go. Well, together with the birch bark that I collected on the way in and what's come off of this, I've got quite a lot here to uh, put inside to get this thing going. Just going to scrape some of this birch bark. Get some fibres. I'm just going to use the ferro rod today. Also got a few bits of kindling, this is some of the leftover fatwood from uh, Bearded Bushcrafter. So thanks again Bearded Bushcrafter, or Trev, <laughs> it's going to help get this going. Be careful not to block the hole up, because you want that airflow. The stove seems to now be going under its own fuel rather than just from the kindling inside of it, so it's cool. It took a bit longer than I thought because it was a, it's a little bit wet in the middle, a bit green in the middle. I thought it was older, this birch. Uh, but I've collected these four stones and they're to go on each piece like so. And that's to keep a pan or a kettle or whatever you want to put on it off of the top there and stop blocking that chimney like so. You could use tent pegs, I think that's what Des does when he does his, but I'm just going to do it this way. should just about see the flames licking up around it there. So it's definitely going all right now. After I've had this cuppa, I think I'll cook some food.
in honour of the Scottish Wanderer, we have Spam. In all its glory. I won't dishonour the spam dance today. <laughs> I'll just cook it and eat it. Personally, since having the Spam with pepper, I've been enjoying having a lot of pepper on my Spam sandwiches. There we go. There's a lot of different ways of making a uh, Swedish torch. This is just one of them. Thanks Des for the uh, inspiration with this one. More of a rocket stove I guess, or a hybrid. Um, I've done a couple of the other types in the past, like where you make the cross with a chainsaw and stuff like that. Um, this one, I think I'd make the hole a little bigger next time. And maybe pick some slightly better wood. This was maybe still a bit too green. But uh, overall, it's worked pretty well. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, I'll stick some more up on the screen for you to check out. I'll see you again on the next one.